Hey guys, this is Cliff Gray with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunts. This is part two of the series I put together. It's just about staying found, not getting lost, a little navigation stuff, field navigation, okay? So this second part is actually going to focus on something that I think is kind of cool, and that's navigating via the sun, all right? So I'm just going to forewarn you that this is going to get pretty nerdy, okay? I'm going to go full-blown nerd on you here. Uh, hopefully some of you guys like it um, and, and enjoy it. But I hope everyone gets something from it because I, I think that with, with navigation by the sun, if you understand the concept of uh, how the sun moves through the sky, you'll never forget, okay, how, how to find north, how to find south, know where the sun sets, know where the sun rises depending on uh, the time of the year, okay? So it is important to kind of know those nerdy parts of this just so you don't have to trivia memorize memorize you know where the sun's going to be during certain parts of the year if you understand the concept of where the earth is in relation to the sun it's very easy to actually get a general sense of direction almost all the time and anywhere as long as the sun's up and that's a pretty good constant in our life right if the sun burns out we're all fucked anyway so it don't really matter but but anyways um it's there even in bad weather or whatever, we still have a sense of where the sun is, okay? All right, so just a couple things right off the bat, guys. Everything that I talk about here is going to apply to the northern hemisphere, okay? So above the equator. For all you guys that hunt down in, in South America, New Zealand, stuff like that, Australia, all this is just going to be reversed, okay? But I just want to put that out there because it is important. Okay, so the reason that this is useful in my mind is that any gear can fail including just the general compass okay a, a compass can become demagnetized or reversed relatively quickly so this is just a tried and true kind of an old native american way of of navigating getting a general sense of direction so i think that's very valuable to you yes gps is all that fancy equipment works but it's also it also uh, it can be prone to failure, okay? So just keeping that, that in mind. So there's two myths, myths out there regarding the sun and navigation that I want to address, and they're both related to each other. The, the first one is that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, okay? That's precisely correct to 365ths of the time, okay? So not a real good hit ratio, but two days of the year, that is correct. It basically rises in the east, sets in the west, all right? And then the related myth that you'll hear is that you can, if, you, if you're going towards the sun in the morning, the way to get back to camp is to go towards the sun in the afternoon, okay? Certain times of the year, those two times I mentioned, when the sun truly does set in the, e or does set in the west, does rise in the east, on those two days, that is true. That if you follow the sun out, and follow the sun back, you will end up back in camp. Every other part of the year, it can get you severely, severely lost, okay? So those are the two myths to keep in mind. A lot of people think those are true and they're not, okay? So what days does the sun truly rise in the east and set in the west, okay? Those are the equinoxes, all right? Luckily for us, one of those equinoxes is in the middle of September, September 21st, or excuse me, September 22nd, all right? So all you archery elk guys, you know, everybody hunting sheep and goats in September, generally you can use the fact that in mid-September, the sun is rising almost directly east, falling almost directly west, okay? All right, and then it also happens on March 21st, okay? So those are the equinoxes. So let me, let me explain this, the whole concept here, all right? For demonstration purposes, I got... The U.S. marked right here with some tape. You can see that. Land of the free, okay? All right, so for all you North American guys, this, that's, that's going to be uh, helpful to you, okay? The Earth has a tilt, all right? In the, in the wintertime, in the northern hemisphere, in the, in the U.S. here, it's tilted away from the sun, okay? In the summertime, it's tilted towards the sun. All right, so here... After the, the, the equinox on September 22nd, we're going to slowly start to tilt up more, okay, as we, wrote, as we go around the sun, all right? We slowly tilt up until the dead of winter, okay? And that's like December 22nd-ish, all right? And you can see as you tilt up, the sun's further down here, all right? 
and we're rotating daily, right? Daytime, then back nighttime, all right? After September 22nd, each day, the sun starts to rise more southeast and fall more southwest each day, okay? And so the apex of that is December 22nd, all right? Because that is when our home, Earth, is tilted the furthest away from the sun, okay? And this is, this is pretty meaningful, guys, from the sun perfectly setting in the west, okay, to when the most extreme case in the dead of winter, like December 20, you know, right around Christmas time, okay? We're talking about 45 degrees difference, okay? So, you know, as you go into those, those seasons, like, you know, in November, you know, mid-November mule deer hunt, stuff like that, if you, if, <clears throat> if you follow the sun on the way out, okay, the, you're facing the sun as you go out hunting, right? And then you follow it as it sets, you're going to get lost bad because 45 degrees is, is very significant, okay? All right? So just remember this. In September, it's about perfect. Rises in the east, sets in the west, right? By the end of hunting season, it rises almost southeast, okay? and it sets almost almost southwest, all right? So for all you hunters, you can keep that, that in mind. And then let's talk about our spring hunting seasons, okay? Oh, just, just as a caveat, this is even, this is more extreme, like the difference I just mentioned is more extreme further north you go. So northern BC, Alaska, it, every day it becomes more pronounced, okay? Every day during that September 22nd to December 22nd, or Christmas time roughly or whatever, um, it's going to become more pronounced, that southern, that southern tilt of the sunrise and the sunset, okay? So let's talk about in the springtime, all right? So March 21st is equinox, all right? So again, perfectly rises in the east, falls in the west, okay? But March, April, May, okay, and then June, on June 21st, we have the equivalent of what we have around Christmas, and that is that the, the earth is at its most tilt for us northern hemisphere folks during the day at its most tilt towards the sun, okay? So here you go. Land of the free up here is tilted down towards the sun during summer. Okay, so on March 21st, it's basically perfect, right? Rises in the east, sets in the west, all right? But by the time we get into mid-May and early June, it's almost at the most extreme tilt it's going to be towards the sun, and that's right during our spring, our spring seasons, our spring hunting seasons a lot of the time, all right? So during that period of time, the sun, the sun actually rises very close to northeast and it falls very close to north, or yeah, to northwest, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Again, if you use the sun to navigate, you know, on the way out, on the way in, you'll get severely lost during that spring bear season, you know, late May, you know, mid-June, okay? All right, so always keep in mind that it's almost, it's almost right, it, particularly up there in northern BC and Alaska when you're up bear hunting, that sun is going to be almost rising northeast and almost falling northwest, all right? So keep that in mind. I hope you guys find it helpful. Um, and, you know, the sun is an exceptional, except, exceptional second input, all right? So in the first part of this series, I talk about not using one input for navigation, the, the sun, if you understand what I just discussed, truly where it's rising and where it's falling, you can use those as a second input, and you know immediately, like, I thought I was going, you know, north down this drainage, but I'm actually going east. It's very easy to tell with the sun, okay? So it's a very good, handy second input for navigation, all right? All right, guys, so we're going to go full-on nerd here, but this is, this is pretty handy. It's not real practical. If you get lost... This, this sort of uh, finding true north and uh, south, uh, it's real time consuming, as you're going to see. But if you were lost overnight and now you've you know, you got a whole day to figure it out, this will be useful to, to you, okay? 
the one constant that you're gonna that you're gonna find is that at the at solar noon, which is when the sun is at the highest point in the sky, okay, so it's gone, it's risen. And then now, now it's about to start falling. So solar noon, not, not clock noon, but solar noon. At solar noon in the northern hemisphere, your shadow is always going to point north, right? Okay, so it's going to run on a stick like this here. I got a stake here just for demonstration purposes. You could use a straight stick or whatever. Your shadow is going to run north-south at solar, no solar noon, okay? All right, so, okay, so the logical question is, how do you find solar noon? Well, one, you can guess, right? During the day, you can watch the sun, okay, it's about right, so you're gonna see, you know, that's, that's solar noon, okay? So here, we're pretty much there today, which is nice. Yeah, the perfect timing for my video. But basically, you can see here, this, this shadow right here, hopefully you can see it on camera, okay? That shadow, that line of the shadow right there, that is running north-south, and I'm roughly at solar noon. If you're at a location that's very difficult to tell when solar noon is, which can be tricky, okay, uh, you know, as, as, you, as you move around different latitudes, the best thing to do is during the, during the day, you can follow the shadow, okay? And what you can do is just like every hour or whatever, just mark the top of the shadow of your stick, and you're going to get a curve, all right? And the curve like today, which is summertime, the curve is basically going to be something like this, all right? Okay, it's going to be a half moon curve, all right? So you've done that for the day, and then what you're going to do is you're going to look at that curve, and you're going to see where the closest point from the, the curve to the uh, stick is, the straight stick is, where that shadow was the shortest, in that you know that that was when you were at solar solar noon, okay? So we're gonna wait for the sun to come back so I can show you, but this is the curve that I've, I've done for the day, okay? Again, just to review, today it's, you know, it's, it's right around, it's close to the, the, the extreme of sum, summer, okay? And we're far from the equinox, so basically, the sun is rising close to northeast, and it's falling close to northwest, okay? All right, so that's how you have, that's how the curve lays out like that. And you can see that on that curve, the shadow is its shortest right here, okay? All right, and that happens to be right now, all right? Co co coincidence for the video, all right? So our shadow is right here, okay, from the stick. So this is running north, south, okay? So, now how did I know which end was north, south? The thing that's nice, and it's always a constant, okay? The only variable is the hemisphere end, but in the northern hemisphere, this is always true regardless of how close you are to the equinoxes. The sun at solar noon will always be to your south, okay? Go back to what I showed you with the planets, all right, okay? It's always going to be whenever there's not a lot, there's not tilt or no tilt, right? Even during that time, the sun will still be to the south at solar noon, okay? If there is tilt, it doesn't really matter. In the northern hemisphere, at solar noon, the sun will always be directly to your south. So you know that's the south end, you know this is the north end. And, you know, as you get, you know, as it, as through the year, what'll happen is this line will get shorter, right, as the sun is more directly above, the line will get shorter, but it'll still apply that the sun at solar noon will be to the, your south in the northern hemisphere, okay? All right, guys, hope that was helpful. Hope that was inter interesting. Gives you another input out there when you're navigating. Good luck.